Hi folks. Hi folks, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Boon Wurrung of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to elders past and present. I'm Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter and it's a pleasure to be providing this session with you today as part of the club's program for Monsu Caulfield. Let's get straight into the content. So this session is number two in the program and it's how to use creative tension to drive success at all levels of your club's activities. There'll be a link in the video information on YouTube to a Miro board that you can go and access and add some information as you work your way through this session. So I'm partnering with Monsu Caulford in providing this series of eight sessions for you. Uh, if you want to get $5 off my new book that became a number one Amazon Kindle bestseller in earlier in the year, uh, you can use the code coupon code Monsu to get $5 off the price of the book through the website at disruptionleadershipmatters.com. And I'll also, if you select standard shipping through Australia Post, we'll give you an upgrade to Express Post. So you'll get that book within a couple of days. Just be aware that that coupon code doesn't apply to Amazon, Kindle, iBooks, et cetera, where the book's also available, including Audible, if you prefer the Audible version. Unfortunately, I can't, uh, I don't have control of their checkouts to be able to do that, but you can get that through my website. So what I'm going to be focusing on here is explaining what creative tension is, how to apply this tool for long-term and short-term goal setting within your club, understand the importance of following the three-step structure when using creative tension. This will also help you with your studies and uh, all aspects, in fact, of your life and how to apply this model to event planning and then the next sessions in the series. So I call this the elastic band for success. And in really simple terms, if you think of your vision or your goal that you've got for the whole of your club or maybe for an event, at the bottom of the elastic band is your current reality. So long as there's a gap between your vision or goal and your current reality, if you were to place an elastic band around those two points and place it on stretch because of that gap, this elastic band automatically now has energy in it and it's called, it's called potential energy. And what we want to do is we wanna take that potential energy and turn it into kinetic energy, which is energy for action. Now, assuming you actually want this goal or your vision at the top, it anchors this structure for you so that that energy you do have in the system is used to enable you to create the future you desire, create the success that you for your club that you desire, create an outcome for an event or any other activity that you might be doing for your club. It might be to create a membership base because you got a vision for a certain number of me members. This is your current reality. There's a gap between those two numbers and you use this structure to help you create that outcome that you desire. It's a really, really powerful tool. So this is relevant for planning, overcoming challenges. So maybe you've got a challenge in your current reality. Okay, well, what's the outcome? If we were successful with overcoming this challenge, what would success look like? We start from there, we come back to your current reality of including that challenge, and then we work out what we need to do to create the outcome we want. And you can use it for connecting to the big picture and more. It could be, what's the grade that I want for a particular assignment uh, at university? What's an outcome for a subject that I might want to achieve? And use this creative tension tool to help you create the future you want, irrespective, and this is going to be really important, irrespective of what your current reality is. You need to have that as a very important context, as you will see, but we want to be able to focus on what you want. So the first thing to do is to get used to this idea of starting with what does success look like? What does my outcome look like? So we call this painting done. When we're successful with the whole year for our club, what will done look like? When we're successful with this event that we're planning for our club, what would done look like? So you focus on the outcome of that situation. 
imagine quantitative outcomes. That's things to do with numbers. So how many people would have been there and attended this event? How many members? How many maybe potential new members or first time people? How many for bring a friend would have come along that aren't members yet, but they came with a member? What would those exact numbers be? And then imagine your qualitative outcomes. So what does that mean? Qualitative outcomes relate to the things that are said the comments, the words, et cetera, the experience that people might talk about. So they may or may not give a rating. If they give a rating, that makes it a quantitative um, outcome. But that might be, you might imagine if people are having a great time as being part of this club, what would they be saying throughout the year? What would we actually hear people say about their experience of being a member? What would they say about their experience of attending a certain event? So that if you're actually imagining yourself walking around that event, what would be some words you were hearing people say if it was successful? And you write them down now, even though this hasn't happened yet. You actually write down what you believe qualitatively people will be saying. Believe you me, when you do this and it actually happens, it gives you goosebumps. It really does. You go, I, I predicted this. I, we imagined that this would happen. And, and here we are. We're now hearing it. So I want you to please go to the Miro board and on the Miro board, which is, uh, I'll just share that in the screen with you. So we've got our Miro board here for you. I want you to go to frame number two, please. And just think of what might be if you use a sticky note, so grab a sticky note, any color you like, add it to the Miro board and add in some quantitative or qualitative outcomes that might be relevant for you and your club. So add some quantitative or qualitative outcomes, we'll spell quantitative correctly there, um, that might be relevant for you and your club. And you can go and add them to this board at any time. As I said, uh, we'll have that link for you in the uh, chat control there for you. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So then you focus on what is your current reality? What is your current situation as it relates to the outcome you're trying to achieve. So it's really important to do that. You have to get good at assessing your current reality accurately. So what's the good things in your current reality and the not so good things in your current, current reality? Both are important because that's going to set the context for the third step, which is your actions. Now, normally the first action you need to do is you've got to find some things out. You need to do some research. So, and what we're going to learn in session three is about what smart hard, hard work is. So you're going to need to do some research to find out what work you need to do, but what's the smart hard work you're going to need to do to move you from your current reality to that vision or goal that we've got. And of course, who will do what by when, which is the role clarity that comes along with your event planning. Or in fact, planning for anything. It could be the portfolios you've got for your club that are rolling along throughout the year. You can do this for them, for each portfolio. What would success look like, okay? What's the current reality for that portfolio? What's the research we need to do? What's the smart hard work? And who's going to do what within that portfolio? One of my passions is motorcycle riding. And this is actually me on one of my motorbikes down at the Phillip Island racetrack down here in Victoria, Melbourne, Australia. And as you see, as I'm going around the corner, my head is looking to where I go. And this is another metaphor for creative tension. On a motorbike, you look to where you want to go. Now, a motorbike goes to where you focus. It goes to where you look. If something dangerous was to come along and actually down at the Phillip Island racetrack, there's a lot of geese and they're often in pairs that sometimes will wander onto the track or be sitting right beside the track and look like they might take off or wander onto the track. Now, of course, I don't want to hurt any geese and I don't want them to hurt me. Now, if I'm looking to where I want to go and I see a geese, which I don't want to hit, if I focus on what I don't want, in this case, the geese, guess where my motorcycle goes? It'll go straight toward the geese, which is not what I want. So you need to learn to focus on what you want. That's why it's called creative tension. We create the future we want. Sometimes things will get in the road, right? And we have to take evasive action like I might occasionally have to do at the racetrack down at Phillip Island. But I'm still focused beyond where the geese are to the outcome of the next corner that I want to get through. I might have to take some evasive action in the meantime, 
but then I get quickly back on track to where I want to be to continue the journey that I'm on. This is a very important metaphor for making sure you create the success that you want because focus is the key. You focus on where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. No, don't be focused on, the on things failing. What if this goes wrong and what if that goes wrong? Yes, that's part of your planning. And yes, that's part of your risk management. But if you focus on this is the outcome, it's just not going to work. If you focus on something not working, it will not work. If you focus on failing a subject, you will likely fail the subject, folks. Many of you have experienced what I'm talking about here and both the positive of this focus, but also the negative of this focus. So if you focus on where you want to go, even if it is difficult, so if you focus on this, and even if it's difficult, you increase the chances of creating what you want to create, okay? Okay, if you actually want it. Now, when I was doing some doctoral level studies, as an example, all of the four subjects that I did, did in that program, which was around high performance, I set myself, they were graded subjects. It was not like a PhD program. It was part of a doctor of business administration program. And all of the subjects in the four subjects I did as part of that course were graded, which means you got your high distinction, your distinction, your credit, your pass and fail, of course. Okay. Now, because I was working full time, running marathons, had a young family, I had all the excuses in the world in my current reality not to aim for high grades. However, I had set myself an overarching goal that at as a very minimum, I should be aiming for the low end of a high distinction if I'm going to be doing this course around high performance, if that's why I'm doing it, irrespective of what the subjects were. So one of the subjects was called quantitative research methods. Now that's about maths and statistics. The last time in my current reality, I had done maths was in year 11 and my pass was 55% for what was called maths A. That's not a great pass. In fact, I'm pretty sure the teacher just gave me a pass to make sure that I had a pass. I'm not sure I actually earned it. Maths, once it got beyond about year nine, was not uh, one of my strengths. So here I am in my current reality, got maths as not a strength, and yet at the doctoral level in statistics, I'm aiming for a high distinction. Well, I had my reasons for it, and it's what I actually wanted. I focused on that, and then in my plan and the actions that I took, the research that I did and the smart hard work that I did, which included in my instance, recruiting someone to tutor me specific to that subject, I was able to get a score of 93%, which is a high distinction. And I'm still not a mathematician. Okay. That's just one example of many, many examples of how this works. So if you focus on what you want, it can't guarantee it, but it significantly increases the chances of you getting what you want. If you focus on what you don't want, it actually increases the chances that you'll get what you don't want. Now, who would want to do that? Okay. It's not that smart. So constructive self-talk is an essential tool for using creative tension. And we focus on that in the third session in this program. So you can use creative tension for both long-term and short-term goals. And the three basic questions are the same. So for long-term goals, you really select a, select a direction. It doesn't have to be overly specific. You want your direction to be clear, but within that direction, things don't have to be too specific, but you might want to use minimums as an example. So within three years, I will have a minimum of $3 billion companies as clients. And that's something that I set my company when I created it in 2007. I didn't have any billion dollar companies as clients at that particular point in time. But I said that within three years, I will have a minimum of three billion dollar plus companies. I ended up with at least five over that period. So that was the minimum part. Okay. Now, I didn't select a specific industry. I didn't say which ones, which industries. I just said, I'm going to have three big organizations as clients okay um, and that was the breadth of my direction so I had some clarity and specificity about the size of the organizations by naming the billion dollar turnover 
but I didn't go too specific into which specific industries I would be in. And this is a principle that you can use for this. By December 2024, we will have implemented a minimum of five sustainability programs. Maybe your club wants to be doing more progress in terms of sustainability. I know Monsu Caulfield as a whole has been doing that. You may be aware of that. But you're not saying specifically which programs they will be. You're just saying there's going to be a minimum of five sustainability programs that we will have successfully implemented by December 2024, as an example, which gives you a couple of years. Another example might be by December 2024, we will have a minimum of 100 engaged club alumni. Now, again, you're not saying where they came from. Maybe they only came from the most recent year or maybe they've been spread over a longer period of time in terms of their involvement with your club. You're leaving it nice and broad and you've got a nice direction. On the flip side, for short-term goals, things that are happening in a relatively short period of time, you want to be as specific as possible. So for example, by 31 October, 2022, we will have created at least five enthusiastic potential committee members for 2023 who will have observed three meetings each. So we're adding in that level of specificity by saying that they will have attended and observed three meetings each, as an example. Our dance party on 4th September, September 4th of uh, Saturday, the 4th of September 2022, will have a minimum of 100 participants who will rate their experience a minimum of four out of five for the statement, I had more fun than I had expected. So as we're seeing here with short-term goals, we're getting more specific about the outcome that you're trying to achieve. We will receive messages during and after the event saying things like, I never thought this would work, but it was amazing. And you might use your own expressions, of course, to identify that. So what you want to try and do now is go to the Miro board. And on the Miro board, you will see that there's a whole range of practice ones set up. So add your name to one simply by adding a sticky note and then practice by starting out with what's the outcome for whatever it is you're focused on. Then go down to step two, identify some dot points relating to your current reality. Then go to step three of working through What's the research? So identify what are the things that you need to find out specific to what your outcome is that you're trying to achieve and what might be some smart, hard work you're going to need to do. This is not going to be a perfect plan, but it's going to be a really useful high-level plan to get things moving and to get you clear and focused on the success that you want to achieve as you're going along. Now, one of the challenges folk have when you do anything in life and you're trying to create the future is roadblocks come along and we've all experienced them. I mean, we've constantly got the, the visit of COVID happening. In fact, my wife's got COVID as we speak. Thankfully, she hasn't been too sick with it this week. And I've got five children and we've been able so far to be able to stop the spread. And it is the third time COVID has come to our place and um, touch wood, I haven't caught it yet, it would appear. So when you get a roadblock, like you can see in this image, they are a gift because what they get you to do is reassess the outcome that you're saying you wanted. Now, that's the gift that a, that a roadblock in your current reality gives you. It gets you to ask, do I really, do we really want this outcome? If the answer is yes, then what we have to do is do some research, some new smart hard work to find our way to either get over, through or around that roadblock so we can continue to create the future we desire. So it's a very, very powerful thing. So again, if your answer is yes, then reassess your strategies and actions, taking into account that roadblock because that's now part of your current reality. What do we have to do to continue our journey? Because what happens, folks, is the bottom of the elastic band moves closer towards that outcome you want over time. Now, as we're progressing, we might hit the roadblock at this point. And if we hit the roadblock at this point, okay, if we still want this outcome, all right, what do we have to do? Our plan will need to change for the rest of the journey to help us get to where we want to be. But the principle is focus on what you want, get into your current reality, work out your research, work out your smart hard work, and of course, 
take action. As you're taking action, a roadblock might come along. Do we still want that outcome? If the answer is yes, all right, what's the smart hard work we need to do to get around over or through this roadblock so we can continue to create the future we desire? These are very, very powerful tools. And of course, innovation loves this scenario. We talked about innovation in the first session around the big nine employability skills. And remember folks, one of the great things your experience of being involved in your clubs gives you is the opportunity to innovate. Remember and specifically those incremental innovations that you get the opportunity to put into life through your involvement of being on your club committee. And they are gold for your career when you're trying to land a job, particularly after you graduate from university, being able to tell stories about the, the innovations that you've been able to create. So that's another gift that a roadblock gives you. It nearly always forces some form of incremental innovation, which is awesome for you and your career. So if you think about specifically an event, now I'm focusing on events because clubs, you do a lot of events, okay? It's a, it's a fairly common uh, reality. So again, what you focus on is what are the quantitative and qualitative outcomes you want to achieve? Get really clear and specific. Then what is your current reality, reality in relation to this specific event? So have you done it before? Do you know anyone that's done it before? Have you been a participant to this sort of event before? And if so, what was your experience as a participant? These are all elements of your current reality that are useful for you as you go through this journey. Then it's like, okay, we've got our, we've got our quantitative and qualitative outcomes. We've got our current reality. Now, what's the research we want to do? Do we need to find out specific venues that we can use? What about performers? Is there going to be catering required? Like, What are the other things that you need to find out as part of your research? So then you need to do your smart hard work, which we're going to explain what that is in the next session in this series. And then finally, of course, who will do what and by when and deliberately use your committee member strengths to help work that out, but equally, you might also want to use this opportunity for this event to develop new strengths for some committee members. Maybe some committee members want to develop their public speaking, for example. So maybe you're really good at public speaking, so you could mentor them and let them do the public speaking as part of their development in this specific event. Like there's great opportunities through your club committees to help people grow and develop their, their skills and growing and developing their skills through being participants in real events is again, a great place to create great stories that can be used when you're going for jobs, when you're graduating from university. And one of the great benefits, again, that being on a club committee provides you uh, as you go through your university. So, We've got some dates to be determined, which I'll work through with Kieran. Uh, please keep a look out for the emails from him. So you've got the number, the third session in the series is discover the power of constructive self-talk and how to foster it amongst your committee members. Number four is developing high quality conversational skills and how to use them for the benefit of your club. Number five is how to establish role clarity for each of the committee member roles within your club and equally how you might translate that to the roles for uh, events. How being a committee member enhances your career prospects. We're going to be really taking the content from that first session and really expanding it up um, and really helping you to be able to leverage that going forward. Really importantly, how to use LinkedIn. Uh, please consider reaching out and connecting with me on LinkedIn in preparation for session number seven. And number eight, feedback, how to receive it, give it, and why you should be collecting it. Once again, I'm Gary Ryan from Organisations That Matter. It's a pleasure to be able to provide this series for you. And I look forward to connecting with you and seeing you live at some of the future sessions. Uh, in the meantime, check out this video, use the Moro board in the link, and we look forward to working with you next time.